Hello, Ron McCarthy here from Bone and Break. Delighted to be back with part two of the glass and transmissive shader tutorial. Okay, so we left it at just breaking down the basics of how certain parameters work with transmissive materials. We're going to start creating something and just looking at different ways we can pull together some interesting looks with glass. One thing I want to touch on before we do that actually is the geometry of your object will affect how light passes through it. So what I mean by that is uh, if we go into our generator panel here and we bring in thicken, we have our renderer on and we put our sphere under thicken, you will see that the geometry changes slightly because it's thickening the object. So that will actually affect, let's reset this to default and put the transmission to one, that will affect how light is passing through. You can already see it's taking a little bit longer for light to get through that object to the sphere because it's a thicker object. If we put that to 10, again, you're seeing this kind of dark highlight come about. So it is important to note that your geometry, even sometimes topology will affect. So if you're intersecting geometry and you have a transmissive material on it, that will definitely affect how light interacts because you'll get kind of maybe some artifacts or weird stuff happening anomalies always double check the geometry so we're just going to take the thicken off for now something we can look at later and we're going to start to really build together some interesting looks we're not going to go for a particular shader we're just going to look at what we can do with the max on noise and layering up some interesting uh, parameters we have max on noise here let's solo it go for what does veroni look like Maybe just bring in some contrast to that. Uh, bring in the low clip a bit so you get those dark areas. Uh, I'm going to change it to Veroni 2 maybe. Veroni 3. Bring down your low clip. Okay, cool. I like this a bit more. So yes. Okay, cool. And let's bring in the maybe a blue. a maybe a purple here go synthwave okay cool uh, go back down oh, the contrast needs to be a bit stronger i think bring down the high clip on this yeah so we get those lines they just look a bit better we can bring up the brightness slightly okay very cool plug this in to our transmission color unsolo it we're getting something a little bit interesting here and then let's copy this select your two colors and just reset it to default and then bring in a displacement plug your displacement into your output port of displacement bring in your max on noise well we're going to be, get a little bit of displacement but what we want to do here we want to right click bring in our redshift render tag and just override these two and bring that up to 50. interesting look here solo this max on displacement and i think there's just a bit too much gray fall off a little bit so we're going to bring up the cycles to just bring in some structure to the displacement and then unsolo it and that looks much better so you're getting these like almost cut crafted lines of your material and right there i mean these are two very simple nodes and you you'll probably want to add more to it and change around the parameters but you're getting a very very interesting look with a very very simple procedure let's go back into our standard material let's have a play with the depth here 50 on that i think that depth looks a bit better and you're still seeing the bust there through the center. Let's bring in another max on noise. I'm going to create a roughness map with this max on noise. So select your max on noise. Leave it on the type to be noise for now. Let's have a look at the cycles a little bit. Maybe one. Put the scale to five on the Y axis. Bring the overall scale down to two. Not two, ten. And we are now going to bring in a color layer solo the color layer plug this into color layer one 
duplicate your max on noise here. And maybe we could put in a look and just keep soloing different layers. I think it's a good way to uh, to see how the different layers look and change your overall scale on the second max on noise that you've duplicated. Maybe to, maybe to 20 and bring down the scale on the Y axis to one. And what you could do potentially here is put this into color layer two. unsolo that. Solo again, select your color layer and enable layer two. And you could do something like subtract. Even overlay. Change the mask there a little bit, but you're getting a little bit of almost like dirt across the map there, which is quite nice. We're going to put the blend mode to overlay. And we might just mess around with the first layer of the max on noise a bit more. Uh, maybe bring down the overall scale to one. Uh, maybe two. And just change the colors so they're not as dark. Just a little bit of gray here. Um, gray on the look as well might work. On that just to see how it's working. And so it's hard to like vocalize my thinking here because I'm just trying to experiment with it a bit. Okay, yeah, let's do that. So on the X axis here, let's put the scale to five and bring up the cycles to four and you get these kind of scratches, which is quite nice. Okay, let's unsolo this, change the name of the color there to roughness and plug that into the roughness port and you'll see you'll have added that roughness which is really cool let's actually just get a look at that up close here if we zoom in and you can see our roughness applied to this quite nicely you know um, and if we take that off you'll see it off there are more things you can do with this. You could group this, then scale it. Even you could layer it up with other color layers, but we're going to leave it for now. We're just kind of showing how you can quickly create a roughness map. This is really cool. And if we were to just experiment with the IOR here, you'll see that this will give completely different looks. Even the head in the center becomes a bit distorted and different depending on what IOR you input into this object. We're going to leave it at 1.5 for now. You have a bit of displacement, you have patterns in the glass, and that is really cool, right? I mean, if we were to even change these to different noise types, you know, you could get really cool looks really quickly. Uh, dense, let's look at that. Even that's quite cool. Cranial, cell noise, so you're getting a pattern here. Luca, which is more of a kind of rough, bumpy looking map. We'll turn down the intensity of the left field and change the temperature to a more blue look, just to give it a more whitewash look. Let's look at another pattern that we could create. Sparse convolution or By just changing this noise type, you can get a bunch of different looks, change your colors quickly, and you can update the uh, glass really quickly. And that's kind of how I created the abstract glass. That's where I started from. But if you take part one and part two, and you build on that and you just experiment, you'll be amazed at what you can come up with. Again, if you haven't seen the abstract glass shader pack, please go check it out on the Bold and Break store. This is a great basis to start from if you don't want to spend the money. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, all those good things. Thank you and goodbye.